Would you join efforts to colonize the moon or Mars? No. No? Absolutely. No. Not interested. Hello, my name is Shiler Mao. Welcome to the Nick's Boots from Start to Finish podcast. I'm joined here today by Tate Doolittle, Kelsey Lersbeck, our favorite producer. Thank you so much for being here. Um, this is kind of a quick one. I'm just kind of updating everything that's going on. Um, also, the big thing that I wanted to introduce Tate. He's a new employer, employee here. Excuse me. Tate will be uh, working as our director of business development and, and helping uh, helping us move things forward on the on the sales and bookings front as well as lots of other things. Right, it's the fun thing about a small business, Tate. You get to wear a lot of hats. A lot of hats. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Tyler. It's good to be here. We've been friends for a long time, so it's fun to to be working together and really excited about what's what's ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, where have you lived? What yeah. are you into? You know, what makes Tate Tate. What makes Tate Tate? Well, uh, I grew up in Colorado. Um, great place to grow up. Just kind of had a love for the mountains from day one. Um, you know, the usual things, camping, fishing with my dad, hunting, things like that. Moved from there to Bozeman, Montana. Just a mecca. First time to leave the house, get out to a super fun place where keep hunting and fishing and doing all kinds of fun things there. Um, end up after that in Ohio and, and seven years later, scratch my head. Why am I, why am I in Ohio? I haven't seen a, a mountain in a long time, uh, which shortly after that left and, and headed for Seattle, uh, chose Seattle cause it was as close as I could get to Alaska without being in Alaska and have been here for shoot eight or nine years now uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, kind of, kind of all over Washington, Oregon, Idaho area, chasing a lot of adventure. Um, yeah, my, Wife and I love love to get our dog out for for hikes and hunting trips and rafting trips, um, camping. It's it's been a lot of fun, and this certainly feels like home these days. You've got a, a new addition recently, right? New addition, yes. Um, have a new baby at home. Um, boy, that that's a that's a mind trip, but it's been the the best blessing ever, and my wife and I are enjoying that, and and really chomping at the bit to get him out there as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've, uh, prior to having the baby, we focused a lot on getting out. And so it's been a bit of an abrupt adjustment to, to not be out quite as much. So we are, we're ready to get out. Uh, we got snow on the ground here this morning, which just makes us want to get out there and ski. And, uh, that means rivers are going to be full this spring and, and ready to get out with our little guy. Nice. Yeah. I've always been curious. Um, not always been curious, but this, this made me think of it. What are some of the newer advancements and kind of baby transportation uh, technology for kind of outdoor sports, you know? You know, it's funny. I, I remember one of the... Like, uh, could you ski with your baby? Uh, so interesting. Uh, very dependent on what part of the country you're in. So a guy I used to work with, really good buddy, he and I would would kind of coordinate trips, you know, work together in person, but make sure we could sneak out on Friday afternoon to, to go skiing or something like that. And one of the things we noticed is if we did that in western Washington at a larger ski area, they were not interested in him having his kid in a in a backpack or in the, the front carrier. When we were in rural Montana, uh, North Idaho, whole lot more uh, welcoming to a little yeah, one riding in there. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's funny. Things like that. Um, it's freedom. Yeah. That's the, yeah. For us, I absolutely. think the other funny one, you know, you're registering for all these things when you're having a baby and we end up with two strollers. Both strollers have never touched the ground. It just, it doesn't fit our lifestyle. We, we, we don't live near a sidewalk and most of the activities we do, we drive there, we get out, we put them in a carrier. So we were just laughing about, you know, the two strollers that have never been used in the last eight months. Are they like the Overland strollers? Because uh, I've had a friend, you know, the, the B.O.B. Yep. yep. Um, and he would go running with it. And um, that thing was pretty sick, man. Like you could you could use it as a trav, travi. Like you could you could carry a lot of stuff in that thing. You know, it's funny. You need a baby, you know. Shyler, um. I'm going to speak directly to my wife and say this was not premeditated. You and I have not talked about this yet. But part of the reason we have two strollers is I was very adamant that we need a jogging stroller. And this I will bring this back to Nick's boots at some point here. This is e-commerce related. 
Um, I was adamant we needed a jogging stroller, the, the Bob, the B-O-B. We needed that. Uh, but we also needed the other one that goes with the car seat and all that. So we get the one that goes with the car seat. Thanks, mom and dad. But the, the, the jogger stroller uh, was titled Stroller for Jogging on Amazon. It was purchased for us very generously. We love it. It showed up with six-inch wheels, oh, fake suspension. Gosh. It's in a box, you know, about this big. I don't think he would even fit in it anymore. And so we we got a good chuckle out of it that e-commerce got us on that one mm. because it was not. You got to trust the brand, man. Yeah. You know? I yeah. Mean, and, you know, it, I will say it was not made in America. So here yeah. we are. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's too bad. that Those those bobs are, are pretty sick. Yep. Um, we'll have three strollers here pretty soon. So, sweet. Yeah. Well, you're just planning ahead. I think that's smart. Absolutely. <laughs> that's that's good. Yeah. No, uh, some other new things happening in your life. Um, I think perfect timing with the snow that we got here. Um, you made an acquisition lately. Oh, yeah. The vehicle. Yes. Uh, Chiler shamed me every time I showed up. Don't do, No, 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 no. <laughs> For all you Jeep Renegade owners out there, you're great people. And um, I just had one as a rental car and it was, uh, you know, it was fine. It was fine. Tyler, you said it was the worst rental car you'd ever been in. And, and this is from a guy who's been in a few rental cars. Um, the Renegade was well-loved, got us to every trailhead we ever asked it to get to, got me over every pass, never once put chains on it. I will always say it was great in the snow. But, uh, you know, transmission was uh, a little temperamental, especially in the later days. So, yes, uh, after a few trips over here the last few weeks, we did pick up a Jeep Gladiator over the weekend – and you got a smoking deal on it, too. Got a smoking deal on it. Yeah. Um, yes. Made, made, roughly made in America, maybe some Parts of it. Parts of maybe it. Maybe Canada. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But no, it was super fun. And, and to that point, you know, got to drive it over the pass in some snow. This morning we, we had some fun. I yeah. couldn't quite keep up with the Raptor, but, you know, it no, was. No, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. I'm a, I'm a man of the people, man. Oh, no. Do we have, Kelsey, to, edit, have, some do we have to edit this on? out? <laughs> Maybe a little the bit. F-150. Can't quite keep up with the, the F-150. F-150. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, shoot. Yeah, no, I think it's a cool-looking truck. It was kind of funny. Like it, um, We put it in the garage last night, and uh, it, it, it barely fits. <laughs> it barely fits. That's a longer vehicle. I, I, you know, it makes sense, right? It's got the I, I noticed that backing up yesterday when uh, I was delivering a new sewing machine, new Skyver. Yes. So, so good, fun things coming yes. in, small leather goods. So uh, bringing our equipment standards up there a little bit. As I was delivering that, backing up to the loading dock, I realized this is a lot longer than my 2000 Wrangler. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank thank God for that great backup camera. Yeah, or 100%. I would have bent some metal. Yeah, one. thank you for doing that. That, was, that saved me. A lot of time. Wenatchee is farther away than you think. It is. Even when it says it's three hours away, it always feels like it's about five. I don't know. Anyway. Um, But yeah, thanks for doing that. Yeah, that's cool, actually. So that's a new thing. We've got a new Seiko uh, sewing machine. Should kind of up our jukey game a little bit on some of the more um, finely stitched stuff, a little higher SPI on like your wallets, bags. I think it might even make the the bonds a little bit stronger too with a little, a little higher density. So yep. we're excited about that. And then we also got a new Skyver too. Very nice new Skyver. Yeah, very nice Not, new Skyver. Yeah. Couldn't always always looking for Skyvers, um, or at least we have been over the last year or so. So kind of cool to get that get that meet that need met. That's probably the uh, the the biggest new thing that's happened in the last week or so. Um, some new products that are coming up. We've got the Crimson and Cobalt, which sounds like a Band. I think I'm thinking of like Coheed and Cambria a little bit. <laughs> now I don't actually even know what Coheed and Cambria's music sounds like. I've just seen them on no, no like idea lineups. But anyway, uh, Crimson and Cobalt will be coming out on Friday um, in the double stuffed tannage. Those are going to be freaking awesome. Um, I hope you buy all of them. Yeah, they're going to be awesome. Um, I've been showing pictures and they look they look beautiful. Um, the Delta Arch insert is. Finally completed and ready for manufacturability, and so that will be coming out on 123. Um, I think that'll be a really interesting option. Um, we've got a couple new prototypes in the works. The one I'm comfortable sharing is kind of a, a taken down boot to try and take advantage of some of our excess leather, um, and so that will be something. It'll be like a less expensive option. Um, it still looks awesome. It's very functional. It's a little lighter weight. Um, that will be something that we'll be launching here um, in the next in the next few weeks or so. 
Um, it's kind of an experiment to see if we can get a little more efficient with with some of our our leather and and not necessarily have to toss it or yep. figure out weird ways to use it like make mouse pads and coasters that people don't really need. So um, we will we will be coming out with that here in a little bit. But yeah, so lots of cool things coming. Um, and uh, yeah, anything you want to add? Can can we go back to the Delta Arch for a sec? Talk about that for a second. So for me, this was the first product I saw uh, hands on from from kind of inception to final product. What is it? Who's it for? I know it's been talked about briefly. We've talked about it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I mean, this is essentially a, so it's um, a couple some you know it's a couple other pieces that are sanded and scived and molded down, covered with a with a really nice veg tan uh, slab. Yeah. Um, and then we'll also be offering like a full insert version of it that will have the insert alongside it kind of glued on top of it. So that kind of slips into the whole portion of the boot. Yep. Um, but it really approximates the feel of a 55 last arch. I wouldn't say it's quite as dramatic, but for all those H and W or, or frankly, any other footwear out there where you kind of want a little more support and you want a little more of that weight distribution, it's a perfect option. I I would hope that we would sell these you know, not just to next customers or or maybe to next customers that are looking to to also use them in their their other use cases. Yeah, you know, I thought that was one of the most interesting use cases when we were discussing it. You know, Lucas having been in stores before said one of the pain points in ordering a boot is is a fifty five last for me. It feel that I've not felt this in my arch before. Oh this, sure, this is a low cost entry point that you can stick in the boot that you're already comfortable with in a shoe. Um, and then when when you do come back and you buy a boot on a 55 last, you can put that insole in the next shoe. It's it's really interesting. And, you know, you said it's a couple pieces of leather. There, there's a lot of work that's gone into. Yeah, I'm trying not to. I don't want to get into it too much because it is it it has taken months and months and months yeah, and months yeah. to develop. It's it. a nice product. And at it, the end of the day, that, yeah. that's we, and it we actually, looked at and it, it looks nice, too. Yeah. Um, so it it that was also probably the last step is like, how do we finish it? So that this looks like, you know, kind of a, yep. a cool thing you want to put your hands and your feet yep. on. And it's quick. We're going to have them built so you can get them, you yep. know, in, in a quick time frame and test it out. Yep. Yeah. So we're excited about that. Um, lots of other new things that we'll be talking about here in the next few weeks. Um, we uh, appreciate your time. Um, Tate, thanks for being on, man. It's great to have you on board and excited for, for what's to come. Kelsey, anything you want to add before we go? Nope, never is. Okay, awesome. Kelsey, <laughs> we will thank you for your service and we'll talk <laughs> thanks, to you Kelsey. later. Thanks, Shyler. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye-bye.